and good morning. Our gift for you this morning is extra special. A whole three hours of Wake Up Nigeria. Yeah, so even though the weekend uh, has ended, uh, we will be extending uh, happy yes. hours into this morning. <laughs> yes, of just, just a few more weekend feeling for you till 9 o'clock. Yes. Then after that, you can do whatever you want. We like to do that on Wake Up Nigeria. We like to start your week the right way. My name is Titi Lyo Oyinso. And I'm Yomi Oka. We are streaming live right now at tvcontinental.tv and on Facebook. Check us out at TVC Connect and in your comments on our social media platforms uh, using the hashtag WakeUpNigeria. You can also download our mobile app from any Android or iOS store to watch us for free live <laughs> on your mobile devices anywhere in the world. Yeah, it's going to be a special day today. Uh, lots of stuff that we are going to be bringing your way. So stick around for the next three hours. On tech, we have tech updates today. Yes, can you see that little machine moving along the street? We're going to be finding out a lot more about what that is doing. I hear there's some interesting robotics going on all around the world, especially when it comes to delivery systems. Yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, on this week in history, we have uh, nuggets for you uh, to take you down memory lane and inspire you to go out there and make your own kind of history. Yes, indeed. Right after that, we have Irue Philip. He'll be stealing the spotlight with the first musical performance of the week. Now, the secret to staying motivated even through tough times. Uh, that's Muddy Motivation for this week. And uh, Coach AAA is going to be talking to us about yeah, getting that motivation going on, no matter what's going on with you. Yes, indeed. Then it's straight to our second performance, and this time, Frankie A1 will be performing right here on Wake Up Nigeria. Now, in continuation of last week's discussion on car maintenance, Aya Shafala will be uh, talking to us about the difference between a hybrid and a conventional vehicle. Mm, it's important to know the difference. Very, very important. Then, the CEO of I Am Fit is our SME guest for today, the current Mr. Universe International, Larry Razak. He'll be joining us pretty soon. Okay. Weekend Mary, things. Mary looking all fly. How Thank you, you. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> I actually am planning to steal this sweater, just so, just so you know. It's really Titi, you want to rob everybody of their sweaters <laughs> today. They're like, really? Uh, <laughs> this is really nice, Mike. Mm. Uh, but how's everybody been? How's the good, weekend? Good, good, excellent. Well. excellent. Mm. Very well. Good? Very well. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Why is everybody all like, <laughs> coding like as if? Coding as Tell as us what happened on the weekend now. Uh, you start now. You want me to yeah, tell you my own? Yeah. Okay, so, so I so I had a, a very big wardrobe malfunction on Saturday. Okay, what happened? So I had this beautiful dress on, and I, it was it's on Instagram right now. I teach the dynamites, just in case you're wondering. Um, and it has beautiful sleeves, a beautiful skirt, and I'm busy taking selfies, having fun at uh, an event, and I go to sit down, and I'm over enthusiastic about the sitting process. Okay. And suddenly, my whole dress just rips right down the back. Did it reach your thighs? It reached all the way up to my waist, from the bottom of the dress all the way up to the zipper. And the zipper was slowly, <laughs> slowly gaining momentum to pop. How? And I had done so much, as in I had formed so much activity. Everybody had been asking about the dress. Even on social media, it's on dress So likes. why should, should I have sat down on, you know, just sat, sat down Yeah, but even, I, I have a feeling it was going to happen anyway. Mm. It was something that was so going to happen. Have plan B? I didn't have a plan B. So I so sat down for the next two hours. Wow. So I, I started asking people to, like, find something for me to wrap up with. This one would say, ah, I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure. What to do. And I have a feeling they were just having a laugh. <laughs> but then eventually someone gave me an Ashoke. Um, you Italy. know, I was going to say that, but I'm Italy. waiting for you to yeah. finish. But it still didn't cover everything. Yeah, but you know something? It eh? was terrible. Mm. I've always believed that. The reason our <laughs> foremothers, I don't want to say forefathers, used to carry, used to carry those things right because of wardrobe malfunctions or if there's an accident because or something. I think this is the biggest Because one that thing had. has saved lives. You know when you go to a party, <laughs> even when you're wearing skirt and a blouse mm -hmm. and then you have your gilly, you just mm -hmm. take it off, yeah. wrap yourself with it and you're good to go. Well, you know, so. mm. those things have been saving lives. So I was about to say that nobody in that whole I had, had to wait for okay. everybody to start leaving. Wow. It was that, because I was in front, in front of the cameras. There was a crane, there was every... 
I had to wait. So people started leaving and there was a side door. Mm. So people had left the whole area. There was actually one lady, a very nice lady. She just kept giggling at me. And I was like, why is this woman giggling? Stop this thing. I'm trying to keep a straight face. I'm trying not to cry here. And she yeah. was just laughing and laughing and laughing because I had formed serious activity in no selfie. You know, oh, you know one of the terrible. things, when, when, I think, when, you, when you guys talk about wardrobe malfunctions, <laughs> the worst thing that can happen to a guy is maybe his zipper broke. Okay. Or, or something like it that. It can't be that bad because you're wearing underwear. And, <laughs> You know, we've given you guys our clothes to wear. Mm. I don't know why you guys jackets, are still... So yeah, <laughs> jackets, trousers. In fact, over this weekend, it was the same thing with this guy, Ouch. Okay. So he's wearing this double-breasted, single okay. um, button suit. Mm -hmm. And then he says that he bought it from Italy and then he now shows the back and it, it, it ripped. <gasps> so, like, it ripped oh, and I was like, no. oh, everybody sees the whole fine stuff. Yeah. But hey... I was like, okay, so uh, one thing you learn from me is for guys wear very clean briefs. <laughs> so, like, in case something like this yeah. happens. If, but it oh, does happen, no. you know, when guys don't over, even over, over slim feet your trousers. Like, ah. There's this guy, Dami, a friend of mine, if yeah. one, some other, a colleague at some other place. You need to see this guy slim fitting. You don't see my CV, he measured his bone to slim fit his brother. <laughs> Like, you feel like, how do you get into this thing? <laughs> like, you just feel like, Obama was just there, and Taylor just came, I just sold you around. <laughs> it's what? so tight, like... But uh, so you know, for, for, for guys, guys, okay. for guys, guys that, that, have, um, that have big rear ends, mm. maybe they've found a way to, you know, make sure that that doesn't happen. <laughs> but for people that have never been through it before, just make sure you have something, plan B, something somewhere, yeah. or a friend, or someone. As in, I didn't an know what to do. An extra dress, extra pair of I pants in your car, or something. I have an extra dress, oh, and an God. extra skirt and top. <laughs> right. At the office. We have to head because over of any to accident. the news update now. Yes, indeed. Theophilus is on standby for us. Good morning and welcome to the news. Taraba State Governor says there is urgent need for the adoption of state and local government police to, end, to put an end to the protracted conflict between farmers and herdsmen. Darius Ishaku made the observation shortly after a memorial service held in honor of 51 farmers killed during an attack on Taraba communities last month. Our correspondent, Owola Biadenusi, compiled this report. Relatives and friends of 51 farmers slain on the 17th of May in Kona and Ardo Kola communities are agonizing over the loss of their loved ones. At this memorial service, the leadership of the Christian community is calling for peace rather than retaliation, stressing that harmonious existence between farmers and herders is possible. In this crisis, there is no winner, no vanquish. Do not say we have been defeated. This is the propaganda Satan uses. There is no retaliation. I know it is painful to say this, looking at the number of casualties. 50, 51, 50 corner men dead, one mumwe, about eight IDP camps, and about 8,494 IDP from 11 villages. Survivors of the attack who are still in camps for internally displaced persons say their singular desire is to return to their ancestral homes. My major call to the government is to quickly come to our aid by giving us our security. What I can tell my people is let there be calm. What has happened has happened. We cannot reverse it. We should all embrace peace and work together as a team. And anything short of it cannot help us. Governor Darius Ishaku says there are clear ways to put in an end to the continued security challenges posed by not only the conflict between herders and farmers, but also by other criminally minded people in the state. If any governor tells you you can do anything about security, that governor is telling a lie. As I stand here, I don't command anybody, not even the police, not even the civil defense. And so what do you do? You are handicapped. We have asked for state police. We have asked and asked. Nobody seems to be listening. Those who are making the laws, we have shouted to the rooftop. They should make a law permitting 
state police. If you don't have police, you can't control security. Security is entirely in the hands of the federal government. There is also a call for the involvement of traditional institutions to secure a permanent solution. Let the elders, the members and the, the chiefs, let them come in terms. Let the government use them so that things, uh, this uh, incessant uh, crisis will no longer be there. Let the, the, the traditional rulers, let government try to be using the traditional rulers so that things like this uh, insecurity we are talking about will be very, very easy for them to conquer. The conflict between herdsmen and farmers has lingered in Taraba and neighboring states with frequent attacks on farming communities. The remains of 25 persons killed by bandits in four villages in Rabba local government area of Sokoto State have been buried in a mass grave. They were killed when Rekoni, Geye, Sage and Kalho villages were attacked late on Saturday night by gunmen who shot sporadically. The governor of Sokoto State was among the mourners at the burial ground and the commissioner of police in the state says four suspects, including a woman who claims to be uh, mad, have been arrested. The federal government has revoked the oil mining licenses of five companies and one oil prospecting license. The revocation of oil licenses was issued uh, by the Department of Petroleum Resources, who said that the revocation was based on a presidential directive to recover legacy debts owed by the companies operating the licenses. Companies affected include Pan Ocean Company uh, Cooperation OML 98, Allied Energy Resources Nigeria OML 120 and 121, Express Petroleum and Gas Company OML 108, Cavendish, Cavendish Petroleum Nigeria OML 110, and Summit Oil International OPL 206. The race for who occupies the principal office in the Ninth Senate has stirred up so much accusations and counter accusations. The latest is from a group that claims to be concerned ABS state leaders and human rights lawyers. The group is opposed to the ambition of the former Abia state governor, Orji Uzo Kalo, to be deputy senate president. They say he needs to clear his name first from the alleged 7.6 billion naira fraud charge leveled against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission before aspiring to be deputy senate president. And that's it on the news update for this hour, where the update is next. Yes, indeed. Uh, now, it's Monday. We have quite a few headlines on the covers of the papers this morning. The Guardian is where we're starting. It says Nigerians want court to stop 4.68 billion naira welcome pay for NAS. Northern groups caution Buhari, others over Lawan, Baja Biamila, say Tinubu, El Rufai, or Shomole have hidden agenda. Stick to the rule, President tells National Assembly clerk. It also says here, Buhari finally accepts Onohen's retirement. Uh, Saraki donates severance pay to Leah Sharibu's family, others. How absence of SEC's governing board undermines investors' confidence. It's a special report on page 42. And finally, foreign investors pull out 1.77 trillion naira over insecurity. Shareholders decry dominance as index slumps by 12.9% 
in 16 months. That's what we have on the cover of The Guardian. All right, let's check out the Vanguard. Yoruba elders to Buhari on insecurity. Fire service chiefs rejig security setup now. Um, as Afenifere dawn commission tango over siege to Southwest. And uh, they're tired out of ideas on Boko Haram kidnappings, says YCE scribe. Yoruba land under siege by herdsmen. Militia, says Afenifer. Uh, police comply with court order, quit Oando's offices, and Serap, budget, EIE, urge courts to stop National Assembly 4.6 billion naira welcome package. That's a very nice welcome package there. Yeah. And Atiku versus Buhari, tribunal resumes hearing today as panel gets new head. And over here we have uh, Dasuki, ex-AGF, Malami, faces disciplinary uh, panel over alleged professional misconduct. How selfish leaders killed Yoruba aspirations. Nigeria's economy, uh, says Akonde. And up here, we've got banks seek new legal power to tackle bad debts. And Ninth National Assembly, Lawan, Ndume, others in last minute horse trading. That's what we have on the cover of the Vanguard. Now we have this day newspaper coming up next. It says here, Presidency, APC, mount pressure on Ali Ndume to stand down. Again, Lawan meets with PDP senators-elect. Northwest moves to take Deputy Senate President Gaya Aliero uh, join the race. Uh, Kuka cautions against imbalance in National Assembly leadership. And there's more information about this on page eight. Eight. Federal government moves to constitute SEC board, more on page nine. Operators decry Lesser's blacklisting of Nigerian airlines. And finally, finally, Buhari accepts Onohe's resignation. Page 10 has more on that. That's what we have on the cover of this day. Yeah, let's check out the punch. Battle for Senate presidency hots up as uh, Lawan Undume meet PDP senators elect. Hmm. Now, speakership. We're ready to negotiate, says uh, Baja Biamila Group. And Buhari accepts ex-CJN on Nogen's retirement. Scores killed as bandits attack five villages in Sokoto. Uh, in Sokoto. And uh, Saraki donates severance allowance to Leah Sharibu's family. Others. Oh, that's a good one. And refineries lose 231 billion naira under Buhari Ami delayed repairs. And down here we have some other stories. Jam Varsity's set cutoff marks for 2019 admission on Tuesday. And PDP attacks APC over Dubai trip for Oshun local government chairman. And CBN blocks alleged smugglers accounts. And Ajimobi commissioners, others, went away with many government vehicles, says Oyo government. And raw drops Ihenacho Ajayi, names 20 debutants for AFCON. That's what we have on the cover of The Punch. Okay, the Nation newspaper has quite a lot of headlines. Let's start with this one. It says, uh, Buhari governors joined forces for Lawan Gwajabia Mila, presidential backing for Omwa Gege, uh, plot against House leader uncovered. It also says, federal government sues NMPC, IGIP, Shell, and NPDC, uh, and uh, on the cover there, you can see uh, a picture of a very arrogant and proud looking Ronaldo there. I have to say, uh, Ronaldo leads Portugal to Nations League glory. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, hey, that's Ronaldo for you. Uh, it also says here, fish farmer cuts off boy's wrist, uh, 25 buried in Sokoto team. That's uh, the presidential task team impounds 120 trucks at the Apapa port. Uh, now, if you are someone expecting a container, maybe you should go check and find out if it's there. Uh, you need to uh, check out these headlines as well. It says, UTME Best Ekene receives Ghanaian Varsity $40,000 scholarship check. That must have been a good feeling. Uh, it says here, Ganduje to stay action on probe of Emir, of, uh, Emir Sanusi. Jam. Stakeholders meet on cut-off marks. And finally, Makinde to set up anti-graft agency. 
That's what we have on the cover of the nation. All right. Do we have time for one more? I'm not sure we do. Uh, okay. I think that's that's Probably how we'll wrap not. it up for now. Ah, yes, indeed. And we're going to be taking a break now and be back with the traffic report in Lagos. Good morning and thank you for always watching. It's time for Lagos Traffic Updates on Wake of Nigeria. Now, please note that you can always be a part of this segment by sending a message on Instagram, Facebook, or even Twitter to let us know what your traffic situation is and perhaps take a traffic selfie. That would be really cute. <laughs> okay, so um, today I'm going to extend from going f uh, from just uh, Yanokwaja to Ikeja along. That's where I'm starting. I'm going all the way to Oshodi. Uh, I saw a few tweets uh, about a couple of weeks ago, and uh, some people saying you always stop at Ikeja along. Like, people still go on to Oshodi. So I'm going to be going there today, and maybe some other time we'll go all the way to Mushing. But let's uh, take a look at what Yanokwaja to um, Oshodi is saying this morning. I don't want to be uh, the harbinger of bad news, but the traffic there is terrible this morning, like bumper to fender. I mean, as soon as you, in fact, all the way from Yanopaja itself, uh, you would experience uh, a bit of traffic. Uh, but at some point, it eases out, actually. But when you get to Dokwemu, moving closer to Dokwemu, it's just bumper to fender, and it continues all the way, I mean, all the way till you get to Ikeja. Like, there is no reprieve anywhere. You just uh, have the bumper to fender from Dokwemu to Ikeja uh, along this morning. So just prepare your mind for that. But as soon as you get out of um, the whole uh, on the bridge situation, uh, you'll find that the traffic eases off. All right. Uh, so, but when you're moving out from uh, PWD, you know, getting to the uh, GRA side, the traffic builds up again. Uh, then it stops again as you're approaching Shogunle. Uh, so, Shogunle is actually not bad. Hmm? Until you uh, close to Arena Shopping Mall, and when you get to that area. Uh, it's it's like the traffic starts building and then it becomes bumper to fender all the way till you get to Oshodi Bridge. Uh, so if you're on that axis right now, prepare for, uh, well, your trip will take you uh, plus or minus uh, an hour, yeah, at least at this time. Uh, so where it's free, it's really free and where it's uh, bad, it's really bad, like terrible. I wonder what you have for me uh, traffic wise, Yomi. Uh, a couple of things. Okay, let me um, have it. From... Uh, Three, uh, 12 minutes ago. Okay. That's about uh, 6.21 or so. Okay. Uh, moving traffic on Echo Bridge. So now that the trucks are out, uh, it's, it's moving. So that's very good for a Monday morning. So there's traffic, but it's moving. And then um, over on, uh, just one more here. Okay. Slow movement on Herbert Macaulay. This is Yaba, uh, leading towards the third mainland bridge. So that turn... Uh, by that leads to Thurmanland Bridge. Uh, there's slow movement there, but it's also moving. You know, it drizzled a little bit this morning, so uh, visibility is also a bit low, but it's fine. So traffic, but it's moving. So within an hour, 45 minutes, two hours, you should get to the island if you know, no matter where you're going from the mainland, I think. Mm. Okay, so um, moving on, uh, let's just quickly take a look at uh, Oro Shoki to... Or Balinde. Now, I know this is prime area for those who live on the mainland and work on the island. And I'm so sorry to tell you that there's a lot of traffic on that axis right now. I mean, it's bumper to fender on Third Mainland Bridge. In fact, it would be better for you to make a detour through Yaba. Okay, so if you can connect to Yaba, it, it will be of uh, great benefit to you uh, this morning if you're coming from Oro. So you just uh, pass through Yaba. If you're passing through Yaba, it will take you about an hour, 40 minutes. But if you're passing the third mainland bridge, uh, you should prepare to be in the traffic for at least uh, two hours. It is that bad. And um, it, it continues all the way to Obalende. I mean, there is no reprieve this morning. So just prepare your minds uh, traffic-wise. If you're just setting out and you have to resume um, at work for 8 o'clock, you might want to call your boss now to let them know that you're going to be very late this morning because the traffic really is that bad. But as I said, you might be able to save about 30 minutes uh, just by passing the um, Yaba axis, all right? 
right. Uh, so, Titi, do you have anything for me, Traffic? That was wise? exactly what I was uh, going to, you know, talk about. Mm. Oh, really? Um, no. The third mainland. But it, it's two hours, eight minutes, just the third mainland bridge right mm -hmm. now. Mm. Um, all the, you know, advice is to go and take Echo Bridge. But um, meanwhile, the Ekorodu Road, uh, if you're coming from Ojota area, the Ekorodu Road is also blocked. You're going to have about 22 minutes just on Ekorodu Road. So it's blocked all the way uh, through Onikpan, through Palm Groove, through Jibowu, through Igbobi, through everywhere, all the way till you get to... Um, uh, what they call the place, the place that goes at uh, Ojelegba, yes. Uh, when you get to Ojelegba, it calms down, and then uh, you start your journey on the Echo Bridge traffic, which we talked about a bit earlier on. So it is quite a journey for everyone this Monday morning, but just sit tight if you have our app, download it uh, if you don't have it, and watch us throughout the traffic. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we'll keep hopefully, you company. Uh, hopefully, whatever happens, give or yeah. take, no matter where you're going. Hopefully by 9 a.m. you have arrived. So yes, sir. Um, <laughs> well, you 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 know, guys, what they say about living close to your office. If you happen to live around Ojeleg by Axis, uh, and you work at CMS, uh, you're probably the luckiest person in the world right now, traffic-wise, <laughs> because it will take you right now. If you set out that is, it will take you less than 45 minutes to get to work. I mean, from Ojeleg all the way uh, to CMS, uh, you would experience uh, ease of traffic. Okay, the, the, there's a there's an ease of traffic for a while. Uh, but when you are approaching uh, that um, Ijora access, expect mm -hmm. bumper to fender traffic. Now, note at about uh, uh, the stadium area, you might experience just a bit of traffic, okay? Um, approaching Alaka, all right? But don't panic. It eases out in front. And then when you get to Ijora, there's traffic. Uh, but it will take you less than 45 minutes. At least you're still way better at your situation, that is, than those on the third mainland bridge right now. Like, I feel so sorry for you if you're on the third mainland bridge. But hey, the most important thing is to get to your destination safe and sound so please drive carefully i'll be joining the guys in the kitchen right now <laughs> guys yeah what's all up? right so um today as we have a couple of things that we're going to talk about yeah of course uh, but today is uh raskimono's remembrance mm -hmm. and uh he he died on the 10th of june 2008 mm. uh, 2018 yeah. at the age of 60 Mm. And uh, we're just remembering him today. Mm. Now, of course, uh, for, for the younger generation... Yeah, that don't know who he is. <laughs> for the younger generation that don't know uh, who Raskimono is, of course, he is uh, a raga you know, musician <laughs> and also the inventor of the rumba style. You know, so. Rumba style. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't look like... Okay. Wow, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so Raskimono yeah. and, you know... Uh, I met his kids um, at at some point uh, some years ago, and you know they're all grown up now. You know, mm, they're not, yeah. you know, they're not kids teachers. anymore. Yeah, they're, they're not kids anymore. But you know, uh, so it's a good day to remember him. Yeah. And, you know, one of the legends who inspired you know even modern day uh, raga. Yeah. yeah. Or is it reggae? Is it reggae or there's raga? There's raga and, and there's, there's reggae. reggae. Like raga is a kind of infusion. Oh, of reggae. Is yeah. So yeah. It's, it's um, a mixture of maybe African reggae. Raga? Not necessarily. No? Yeah, Not necessarily. Raga, raga is scattered reggae. <laughs> raga, raga is reggae that used that or something. <laughs> okay, okay. But you know, it's, reggae, it's, it's, reggae is like, reggae is like um, send down the rain. Yeah. Raga is like aroma style. <laughs> I know. Okay, well, <laughs> no, no, not necessarily. So reggae, oh. so original reggae of, obviously is, is Bob Marley. So yeah, of course. All of course. the, you know, so. Yeah, very. Infusion of, of a lot of things. Raga tries to experiment a lot. Yes. So you would see a little that's bit of calypso in there. Yes, you see? that's a different thing. Just, yeah. That's in the aroma style. It's just, wow. just scatter, you know. So in Raga, you can just hear, suddenly start hearing a trumpet. Yes. Yeah. Or, wow. you know, some uh, jazz guitar. Okay. So they just throw everything in there. All right, so it's a all party. Right, With Raga, right, it's right. just party down, you know. You know, there's, there, there are not many, you know, you know, reggae clubs anymore. There are a few on the island. There's even one Jamaican restaurant that actually really focuses on just Jamaican food and all that. Nice but it okay. feels like 
it's something that's slowly fading out and, and I don't think Reggae? that's fair. Yeah, I've not heard. Fading? Yes, because I've not been hearing. On, it depends on the circles you're in. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. Okay, so the circle, when it comes to reggae circles, you know, the, you know, the so known for which reggae, which is, I think she's quite right, which reggae yeah. artist is the, B or C list or is anywhere. Right no, now. You know, you, know, you know something funny I, well, about that, reggae? That's very true. Is mm. that it's not really about the artists. It's it's about the music. Okay, so um, if we want to go uh, gospel-wise, mm -hmm. Look Up Child by Lauren Daigle okay. has kind of like a reggae infusion. It has that reggae undertone. Gospel. Yes, kind of okay. like. And guess what? It won two Grammys this year. Mm -hmm. Exactly, Our album did very well. So it, right. I, I, don't, I don't think it has to do with the artist. It also has to do with you know uh, the sound, how people appreciate and accept your music. Mm. I know there are a few that do live band events here in Lagos. Some mm -hmm. bars and restaurants have some reggae artists that just come on stage and play throughout the night. Yeah. But then when it comes to putting out music, uh, you know, going really full mainstream with the reggae, I'm, mm. I'm just not seeing it in Nigeria. Last, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, last week, Majek uh, Fashek was complaining that a particular uh, station wasn't playing his video because he felt it wasn't up to standard, even if he shot it outside the country. Wow. So the point is that you see airplay, mm. you watch, you could watch for weeks and you won't even see a regular video. Yeah. That's yeah. So, so that's why, that's why, that's why mm. I mean by look, my, and that's why you, I think you're right. Mm. Like yeah. the reggae, something, at least then we'll still see one or two. Even, I, I, I think there was a time African China and over, mm. we we'll mm. feel African China yeah, a bit, a bunch, and of, guys. A bunch even, of guys. Even the uh, you know, plantation boys used to have do some reggae, three, yeah. four, you know, reggae songs so, in the, on the album. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it also has to do with artists. Fewer mm. artists are actually doing reggae mm. now. Yeah. I take, for example, you remember Wajiz I Wish. Yeah. That it song today really, yeah. is still big. And then she did the other one about um, uh, Thought I would, uh, uh, Thought You Left Me For Good or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember the name of the song, but that's how the, the, the song goes. Yeah. So they're, they're actually fusions. Pato Rankin, for example, mm. he mm. has a new album out mm. now that he's Brandy. doing very well. Mm. He named it after his daughter, Wilma. He's also so, uh, mostly reggae. So that's what I'm saying about, uh, just as Yomi said, it depends on the circles and it depends really, on what yeah. you actually listen so, to. So, um, anyway, in other news. So, <laughs> three things are, are tr trending that seem to be related. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, made us I like, like that. blood so involved. There's, per there's Peruzzi, there's... Uh, Ten, I don't know what Pamilari means. Pamilari. Oh, pam oh, right. I was wondering. Okay. Pamilari and sorry, Tenny. Sorry. Okay, yeah, Pamilari. Pamilari and then Tenny. Yeah. So three things. Hmm. Okay, there are two spellings of Peruzzi so, that are actually trending. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, so I, I don't know the whole story, but I know that somebody slapped someone. <laughs> okay, so, so there is there is a an influencer. I'm not sure all the details. There's a particular influencer called Pamilari. Um, and uh, apparently, he tweeted something in the past that had to do with comparing Peruzzi with Tenny, saying one was better or, you know, you know, I guess better than the other. And it just turned into something else. Um, now, I'm not sure what I'm, I need to get to the bottom of what that story actually came to, but it is alleged that um, Peruzzi uh, asked his boys to hold Pamilari down and slap him. I don't know how true this is. I don't have so, all the details, but... Even, <laughs> even details or not. So I, I went to check the trend. Okay. Yeah. Clicked on Obalinde Travis Scott because I was wondering who uh, is Obalinde Travis, Travis Scott. Scott. <laughs> and then I saw Peruzzi, a.k.a. Obalinde Travis Scott, Onisha Quavo, okay. Ali Mosho Lokidube. Like, why? <laughs> why? Why are people like this? Okay. Oh, so uh, whoever slapped who... Uh, uh, I, honestly, I, I actually to, don't to know God, the details. I don't... I actually don't. Care like, like, oh, okay. I, like I don't care. You know, like when you don't care enough. You know, I'm not saying. 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 I'm not sa
let's take a look at tech updates this morning. Earlier this year, Amazon announced its Scout Sidewalk delivery robot. Well, at the time, details were sparse, except for the fact that the company had started to make deliveries in a neighborhood in Washington state. At Amazon's Remas conference, Sean Scott, the VP in charge of Scout, spoke about how his team built the robot, how it finds its way around, and what its future looks like. These relatively small blue robots could be roaming a sidewalk near you soon, uh, not in Nigeria, but though, as of now, Amazon isn't quite ready to talk about when and where it will expand its network from its single neighborhood to other areas. Scott stated that, and I quote, for the last decade, we've invested billions of dollars in cargo planes and delivery vans, fulfillment center robots, and last holiday period, we shipped over a billion products with prime free shipping. So it's my job as VP of Amazon Scout to bring another new innovative, safe, and sustainable solution to this delivery network to help us grow quickly and efficiently to meet customer demand, end quote. Well, the robots are here to stay. What do you think about this delivery robot? Let's know on social media at TVC Connect. I'll also talk about it with the guys. And then moving on from that, Facebook is finally ready to reveal details about its cryptocurrency, codenamed Libra. Its currency is scheduled for a June 18th release of a white paper explaining its cryptocurrency's basics, according to a source who says multiple investors briefed on the project by Facebook were told that date. Meanwhile, the company's head of financial services and payment partnerships for Northern Europe, Laura McCracken, told German magazine Wischaf's Wash Sebastian Kitsch that the white paper would debut June 18th and that the cryptocurrency will indeed be pegged to a basket of currencies rather than a single one like the US dollar to prevent price fluctuations. So, well, uh, cryptocurrency is here to stay. If it's not Bitcoin, there's another, there's other, there are others. But Libra is about to make its debut. Let's uh, watch out to see how well it would do. And moving on from that, at its Remars conference, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos spoke about moon exploration as he took the stage to be interviewed by Jenny Freshwater, Amazon's director of forecasting. As any AWS machine learning tool could have forecasted, having an employee interview her boss didn't lead to any challenging questions or especially illuminating answers, but Bezos did get a chance to talk about a variety of topics, ranging from business advice to his plans for blue origin. Now, we can safely ignore the business advice given that Amazon's principle of disagree and commit is about as well known as it could be. But his comments about Blue Origin, his plans for moon exploration and its relationship to startups were quite interesting. He noted that we now know so much about the moon more than ever before, including that it does provide a number of resources that make it a good base for further space exploration. Oh, very soon man could be living in the moon. It's possible. And moving on from that, Spotify just announced a partnership with Barack and Michelle Obama's production company, Higher Ground. Now, through this deal, Spotify says the Obamas will develop, produce, and lend their voices to select podcasts, connecting them to listeners around the world on wide-ranging topics. Higher Ground was founded in 2018 as the Obamas signed a content partnership with Netflix. The company's initial slate for Netflix was announced just over a month ago, covering everything from a Sundance documentary about industrial development in Ohio to a scripted anthology adapted from a New York Times series profiling noteworthy names who didn't previously receive Times obituaries. So, what would, uh, would you enjoy listening to a podcast that has Barack Obama's voice? Well, I would. I'd love to hear that. Yes, we can. Once again, of course, Michelle Obama, wonderful um, partnership between uh, the Barack and Michelle Obama Foundation and, of course, Spotify. That's all we can take on Tech Updates uh, this Monday morning. Don't go nowhere. There's still a lot more to come on the show.
For the rest of this week, you certainly have nothing to worry about. In the morning. Yes, of course. Because we got you covered. Definitely. We plan to be here with you, so hey, make sure we advise you to tune in as soon as it's 6 a.m. This is the only place you want to be. My name is Titi Lyo Unisong. Yeah, welcome to the number one breakfast show. Yes, My sir. name is Yomi Uwakwe. We are streaming live right now at tvcontinental.tv and on Facebook at TVC Connect. And send in your comments across our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Use the hashtag WakeUpNigeria. Now, we have an app available for you to download for both Android and iOS stores. Now, this app allows you to watch us from anywhere in the world for free. I'm just saying. It's, it's, it's free. No charge. No charge. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, you might need it if you're going out into traffic right now because we hear it's really crazy, especially on the third mail average. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to learn a thing or two from Chef Tina, the one and only. Yes, sir. And she's here with lots of fish. <laughs> yeah, whatever that is, I know it's It's actually be. not fish, it's actually shrimps. Shrimp. What? Well, potato, oh, that's fish. Potato. I didn't see the fish. Yeah. How did Yomi see the fish you know, before you know, me? Uh, Yomi, fish, shrimp. Yomi yeah. is actually surveying everything. And I really like him for that because even you with me in the kitchen, you never knew there was a fish. That's what I'm wondering. I for you. Yomi! How so did you know, enter this kitchen? So to I know see how fish? to I know how to sniff it out. I only see I'm I know the only thing I'm seeing out. here. Um, shrimps. Where did fish come fish. from? Fish. Yeah. So once I walk hey. into the house, I'm like, okay. Fish. Somebody cooked fish yeah. somewhere. Hmm. Okay. So Yummy. Wow. <laughs> All right. Now we have a number of historical facts to remind you about this this week. Uh, on This Week in yeah, History. That's going to be coming up uh, later on. Mm. And then it's a performance from Roy Phillips. On Monday Motivation, Coach AAA will be sharing secrets to staying motivated even through tough times. Right after that, we have Frankie, uh, who's going to be giving us a live musical performance. In continuation of last week's discussion on hybrid cars and all there is to know about them, Ayo Shofela is back. She'll be discussing the difference between hybrid and conventional vehicles. Mm. Yes, sir. I want to talk about vehicles in Nigeria. Okay. The fact that, um, mm. where, so if, if you're buying a car, right, and it's, some cars are 10 years old, 12 years old, 15 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it's a big deal in Nigeria because of the huge tariffs on it. So you, you, you buy a car for, say, $3,000, which yep. is not that much. It's just a millionaire. Then you then have, um, right after that, you then bring it in and then you spend another two, three thousand dollars clearing it and all of that. Mm. And it's it seems like a big deal in Nigeria, but a lot of those cars are now becoming almost like toxic waste. Yes. Being dumped in Nigeria. So yes, that's that's a that's a big deal. Those yeah. kind of cars are being uh, uh, they're trying to phase them out. So you, know you, you realize that this place is almost now a dumping ground. So when you're buying a car that is like ten years old, it's it's actually a big problem. You know mm. the amazing you know, thing? I, I, you know, like, I remember when I was telling you, when we were talking about hybrid cars, I remember the first time I saw, um, I think it was the previous, I saw the advert on um, an international media station. And I was like, wow, and I was like, wow, hybrid cars. This was like maybe 12, 13 years ago. And I was like, wow, hybrid cars. I just stepped out of the house. Okay. Hope, and I, you would not believe the car just passed in front of me. Are you serious? It's like, what? Okay. Don't try, don't joke with Nigerians, man. <laughs> don't That's joke true. with us. Very like, true. don't joke with us. So and this is not Lagos, so. Mm -hmm. This is Port Harcourt. Like, the, I, I, I was like, really? So, this, even now, some people are even still doubting yeah. hybrid cars. But this was like over a decade ago. Mm. And I'd already seen the Prius here. Like, it was there. I was like, ah. I, just, I saw it. I was like, wow. So the, Prius, <laughs> the Prius vehicle. Okay, so let's, let's not really. Let's, I, I don't want to focus on that alone. I want to focus on the, the technology behind it. Mm. the mindset behind it, meaning that countries, you know, outside, outside here, they are forward thinking. They're thinking about alternative sources of energy. people are moving. Uh, they're, yeah. they're moving way beyond the hybrid is what not we're school. talking about. It's water. Yeah. It's water old school now. Cars. So I'm my friend, so there's a, there are, you are talking about cars now, not even in the future, mm. that you just come down. You know, normally when you give it to a concierge, you get into a, ho so yeah. a hotel and then you give your keys to a concierge. Yeah. You just come down from your car, your car will go and pack itself. Yes. <laughs> then you are coming out from the hotel, yeah. the car yes. will bring itself to you. Yes. Yeah. You ever yeah. tell it, hey, yeah. I'll just give you one name now. Let's you say like, cars, you just you understand? Charge. Jarvis or something. Yeah. Yeah. Jarvis, I'm coming down. <laughs> okay, sir. And Jarvis just goes, pa, 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 pa. Look at what you talked about with tech. Then. Jarvis you is waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about something with tech today. Yeah, those the robots. Delivery, delivery robots. robots. The delivery robots. 
But I'm just trying to imagine, it has to be in a place where things work. Mm. So the traffic yeah, lights right. have to work. If it's crossing the road, it needs to know it's not going to be hit by a car. Yeah, right. Traffic lights, do they work here? Mm. Um, zebra crossings. Yeah, right. A right? good man once said, someone Other said individuals not robbing yeah. the robots. <laughs> the robot. <laughs> you said something. That was you said something. You, know, that you, was you might even talk about the said. delivery, you know? but what about it be, you know, the robbery parts? Yeah. It's very likely. Yeah. Uh, but, okay, they will definitely, you know, have some kind of security measures in place and all that but the issue is things still have to work the, it, there has to be a station where it can go and charge itself so one times with a message you know? and said creating yeah. an environment that works a great man and that message that thing is still always in my mm. head creating an environment that works we need an environment to work for things to grow as yeah. it stands i, I totally agree so our con my biggest concern is that very soon in the next five or ten years mm. Africa is just going to be the dumping ground for all these cars that yes, are being that are made not abroad. And then we think we're buying petrol, them cheap. Yeah, petrol and diesel cars are going to be a dumping ground. Yeah. Right? Africa is going to be a dumping ground for all of them because yeah. nobody's going to be using them any longer. Mm -hmm. We have to take fitness indoors this morning. The rain seems to be, you know, uh, making our garden a bit a wet, yes, uh, yeah, exactly. a, a little bit too wet. <laughs> but we have I Am Fit team here yeah. to give us our fitness. Good morning, my name is Nii, and you're welcome to this morning workout session. This morning, we're working on our arms and our legs. But before we do that, let's do a quick warm up, okay? Dropping jacks first. And four. Five and six, seven and eight, nine and ten. Okay, right about now we're gonna do boppies. So let's go. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Nine and ten. Okay, we're gonna do some push ups now. Quick one. Just five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, straight to our workout session for today. We start with the arms. Okay? One, two, three, four. Five. Now we increase our pace to a more difficult one. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Now we're going for another program. This way. One. And two. Three. And four. Five. And six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. So now we're going straight to the legs. So I got my resistance band here. We're going to use this. Right this way. Okay. So I'm going to squat now with my dumbbell. I go one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now walking side step squats. Ready? Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, good. So right about now, we're gonna do some squats. Okay, I go. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, thank you very much. Once again, my name is Lee. And we're done for this workout session. All right.
the good part of having the exercise in here is everybody was joining in and it looked like some people were doing makosa, but it's all right. <laughs> You're welcome to the kitchen right here on Wake Up Nigeria. It's a brand new week and yeah. that means a brand new recipe from Chef Tina. How are you today, Chef Tina? I'm good. Great. Great. Uh, are you sure you're good? Like you all covered up? <laughs> it's unlike you. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, why are you bringing me out now? I'm not. I'm, this is another I costume. Know. This is another costume. From today, you see me like this every time. Chef Tina, it's all right. We understand that it's raining this morning. It's still raining, Chef. <laughs> we don't need I'm, to I'm really much. cold this I, morning, so no. I just have to <laughs> be well, on it's this. All right. mm -hmm. It's all right. So what are we making today? We're making yam porridge. Yam porridge. Mm. And fried fish, tuna mm. fish. Oh. So I have my yam already. Boiling. Boiling. Yes. So I'll just run through the recipe. Okay. I have my onions, okay. tomato paste, mm -hmm. spring onions, mm -hmm. shrimps. Mm -hmm. I have my tuna fish, them properly, popularly known as entitles fish mm -hmm. then i have my vegetable oil i have my salt i have my uh, curry masala okay. seasoning cube and rosemary these ones are just for the fish Wh then which ones are for the fish the curry masala rosemary and my uh, corn flour here okay so this is corn flour yes what else is in it i actually had it curry mm -hmm. masala mm -hmm. seasoning cubes mm -hmm. salt rosemary Oh, so that's what's in there? Yes. Okay, so, okay, great. So the yam is already on. Okay. I'm going to... My onions will oh, just all go. the onions going. Yes. Okay, okay. Then the next thing is my tomato paste. Okay. So do we wait for the yam to boil a bit before adding tomato paste? You or are actually... You do it at any point? You just... Immediately you just put your yam mm. in the pot. You had everything I added now. Oh. So okay. by the time the yam is ready, you know, most times people think these are sarrow that we see out there that use palm oil. Mm. It's actually um, tomato paste that we use that will give you that reddish Really now? Not color. the palm oil? Not palm oil. Mm. And you know, when you now had your shrimps, it gives you that um, local asaro. When I'm making asaro, yeah. um, the yam pottage, I usually use um, blended pepper. You can use blended pepper, but when you add your um, tomato paste, it gives that um, pot a very lovely look. Reddish look. Yes. Mm. Mm. So I just had that. Then my seasoning cube goes in immediately. Okay. Then my salt next. Okay. I'm just going to add a little salt. So you hadn't done all this before? No. So this is I just, just putting it all yes, together? Yes. Okay. I just want us to see how it goes. So everything boils together? Together, yeah. Mm. So I'm just going to add a little water more. Okay. To so today we are having yam porridge and uh, fried fish. Uh, that's a very lovely staple, especially right here in Nigeria. You enjoy your yam pottage in any way you want it. Some people like it with boiled eggs. Mm -hmm. uh, Though I've not been able to reconcile with that bald eggs and yam. <laughs> Do you know? They give me the same feeling of beans and bald eggs. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> you were going to say something. You know, this morning I was actually, I think I got to the studio when I said, oh my gosh, I didn't bring my eggs. <laughs> you know, it's always lovely having the fish by the side and also boiled egg. For yam potage? Yes. Wow. Okay, so. you know, as they say, uh, to each his own, everyone has uh, what they like in meals, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yam potage and uh, boiled egg, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Fried fish by the side, mm -hmm. or oh, you have that, um, you know that um, um, stock fish, they call it eja panla. Oh, eja ki kika. Kika, yes. Yeah. You know, you just put it by the side then, you know, because it's brown, you mm -hmm. just put your boiled egg in Should the Should I tell you I like my yam potage? <laughs> like... I prepared this yam pottage. Mm -hmm. I now have meat, stewed, mm -hmm. stewed meat. Mm -hmm. Then I put the stew of the meat even on the yam pottage. Mm -hmm. And then I'm enjoying this tasty meat. Which one is fish and boiled egg? Mary, sincerely speaking, fish goes with pottage. Ha! Sincerely speaking. Maybe because, you know, 
I, it might fish be as if I'm very choosy about food, but I'm not really big on fish. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> that's why I said to each his own. Everyone has um, his or her preference on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the crayfish is going into the yam pottage, right? Yes. Okay, so the rest of the ingredients, at what point do they go in? When I'm done, with, when this one is uh, the the yam is ready, okay. I'm going to use the masha okay. to match it. When I'm done with that, I'll add up the crayfish, okay. then the... Uh, shrimps then later part of it that's when i'm going to add in my oh so when it's onions. cooked is when yes. you're going to add this in yes because okay. i don't want it to be overcooked i want that um uh, crunchy way when you're eating it and also greenish okay i don't want it to be overcooked so okay. the, i'm just going to the mixture i have here i'll use it to coat the fish when i'm frying so that's like why, crunchy yes, fish yes yes okay. the reason why i'm doing is i don't want you know when you're frying fish mm -hmm. if you don't coat it maybe with butter or there are chances when you want to turn it over, it will get... Oh, yeah, so yeah. the purpose is to avoid it yes, breaking. so it will make it firm. Firm. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so. okay, okay. I like that. <laughs> okay, so um, we've gone so far with the yam pottage. Yeah. And for the benefit of those just tuning in, could you just run us through what we've done so far? Okay, um, we have in here a yam. Okay. Diced in the any shape you want. Then a uh, seasoning cube, salt. Okay. Uh, um, tomato paste. The tomato paste was actually the one with pepper and onions. Okay. So we have our onions in here already. Okay. So it's getting ready. It's soft. It's Very soon, ready. I'm sure you have to do the mashing. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just quickly go through the fish. Okay. So I have my... Now, I noticed you didn't put any vegetable oil. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. So it will have to be ready before you put in vegetable yes. Is there a reason for that? And just to make that and um, the oil part, vegetable oil part of it, you know, have that flavor. So oh. it's not, you can add before or after. I like adding maybe when I'm about to bring down my pot. So okay. I just okay. have. So that's it. Yeah, you know all these uh, fish you buy by the roadside. Mm. Uh, basically, this is how they achieve it, you know, yeah. getting the whole crispiness going. More like crispy chicken. Sorry. That's fine, I'll just get you another. Or do you still need? I'm okay one? with okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So I just so coat this. Okay. You can Let help me. me. Yeah. yeah. So you could do it any way you want to. Mm. Some people add more um, seasoning than this. Yeah. I know for sure that there are some people that will add so many ingredients that you find yourself struggling to tell the taste <laughs> apart. <laughs> You know, um, when it comes to fish, little thing you put will just be too, too much. Yes. So you yes. just have to be wary of what you're doing so you won't have that over fish. And that's why fish. some people um, settle for fish flavoring mm -hmm. <laughs> because fish is very delicate. Yeah. You might think you put in just a little salt and when you're eating the fish, it will be too It will be salty. like you just poured in like the whole jar of salt in yeah. it. The only part whereby the fish you need to add more salt is when you're grilling it. Okay. Yeah. So grilling fish requires um, more no, yeah. salt. Yes. Okay. Okay. So That's I amazing. just have this. This is ready. So are you going to leave it to marinate for a while? Or yes, you I'll just leave it for a while. Okay. For how yeah. long? Uh, it depends on you. When you say you. it depends on me, if for I me, was to leave it out, I would leave it for like an hour if I wasn't in a hurry. Even if you leave it for an hour, two hours, you know, the, the most important thing, we've already done it by coating it. That's just it. So Do you coat the, the insides as well? Or just no, external? Just the yeah, external. Okay, okay. So I will just, I'm just going to mash my... Oh, wow. I love the color. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I see what you mean by... Um, no using palm oil. Yeah. Wow. This is lovely. So Yam pottage coming up. I'll Breakfast. Just mash it. Now, you know, after mashing is usually the time when um, certain members of the family mm. who don't like certain things in mm. their pottage, you take it out for them. Yeah. Yeah. So, like a yummy now who doesn't <laughs> like um, shrimps, we can always dish his meal now, now? before adding before the shrimps. Adding the shrimps, you the see? problem with doing that in a large family is <laughs> by the time you add those things you want to add, <laughs> the portion is usually much lesser. Because, <laughs> for some weird reason, those who, you know, claim not to like 
certain things mm. and you just say, okay, come and take yours now. You know, they actually, they are the ones I really enjoy more. My, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, for me, there's something I, I grew up with. My dad, you can't tell my dad you don't like this or that. You know, he will tell you, okay, you don't like it. Wait for the next meal. Ah. <laughs> 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 I, there, there are things I tried with my kids. You, you see, they'll say they don't like crayfish. Mm -hmm. I don't like fish. I don't like, I'm like, what will you like? Please don't go and give your... <laughs> husband or wife problem. In the no, future. you know, for, for us, uh, not liking things was normal because mm. my dad is a vegetarian. Okay. So we've always had a different pot of soup in the house. One for my dad and one for general. Mm. <laughs> so the whole thing of I don't want this, I don't want that was more or less something we grew up with. Some of us didn't like this. And my mom, I don't know how she managed, thinking back, she would make sure she suits everybody's taste. Here it is. Eh? There's something I've come to find out. Growing up, I never liked anything swallow, when I mean swallow, mm. a bar, whatever. I like, when people are chewing rice, mm -hmm. I swallow. When you swallow, maybe swallow. Wait, you, you, you take a spoonful of rice and then you just swallow it like yes. that? I'm not joking. Mm. You know, I got married to a man that he likes swallow like nothing else. I just had to adjust. Wow. You know, there are times I'll be like, oh, this is not my take at all. So we are mashing the voltage. It's actually going better. <laughs> All right, so um, the, the yam potage is almost ready, obviously. So I'll just add the shrimps now. Okay, so it's about time for us to add this. Now, I would thought you'd want the shrimps to cook a bit with the yam. Apparently I'll, not. I will do that. When I Are you going to add water? I'll add little water to it now. Okay. Okay. So our yam potage is almost ready. Uh, breakfast is almost served. Uh, at some point when this has cooked a bit, we'll definitely be putting in the spring onions, am I correct? Yes. And then of course, I uh, will fry the, the fish because I believe it would have marinated enough to serve the chef Tina. It's time for us to take a break. Now, keep in mind that uh, there's a lot more to come on the show. Stay with us as we Wake Up Nigeria. Now, when you start your week with us on Wake Up Nigeria, you're indeed very likely to get the best out of it. Yes, indeed. Now, it's the final stretch uh, for uh, this morning. We've had two hours already. Yes, wow. Indeed. Now, a lot has happened since 6 a.m. And uh, quite a number of things to come as well, including your Monday motivation, yes, by the way. Don't forget, my name is Yomi Owokwe. And I'm Titi Laya So Now, another way you can watch us is to stream live with us if you have to leave the house. Please stream live. TVcontinental.tv is the website and Facebook live at TVC Connect. Send in those comments. Use the hashtag WakeUpNigeria. Now, the TVC app is also available for download on both the Android and iOS stores. Now, this app allows you to watch us from anywhere in the world. That's mm. really special. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And there's still quite a bit coming up. We have started an amazing conversation about hybrid vehicles. Yeah. And we're going to continue that conversation today. Yeah, it looks like these ladies are busy in the kitchen as well. Anyway, yeah. and now Irish Fella is going to be uh, joining us uh, to talk about uh, the differences yeah. and why you should probably go for hybrid vehicles uh, in 2018. <laughs> 2020, 2019. Oh, 2019, yeah. <laughs> now, on motivation, we have Coach Triple A. Now, he'll be sharing his secrets to staying motivated even through tough times. Mm. Nice, <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Now, Mondays can, 
You know, I've, uh, you know, it's really sad, but I heard some statistics some, some time ago that mm. Mondays were one of the most um, hmm, hated days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, like people that's getting up in the morning to no, say no, like, it's not one of the most, it's the most hated day. It's the most hated day of the it week. Is. Yeah, and it's, apparently, it's also the day that has the most memes. <laughs> it is. And yeah, sad memes. Sadly, it's also, uh, statistics have shown that a lot of suicides happen on Mondays. Oh, mm -hmm. seriously? Yeah, oh, wow. I, had, I had heard that before. And, mm. it, it, you know, I, I was trying to think of ways to spruce up my Monday, mm. make sure that my Monday is more positive. Mm. Uh, and also motivate other people to feel happier on a Monday. Mm. But That's it, why the hashtag Monday motivation. Yeah. Very cool hashtag. Very you have something important. for us? Mm. You know. Share. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I, I think we all need. Um, someone said. Mm. Uh, someone said you cannot get too much motivation. Mm. Uh, motivation is just like taking a bath. You need it every day. Mm. You understand? But so the thing is, I've always loved Mondays. The, the things that motivated us. When we're younger, are yeah. probably not the things that are going to motivate us at this age mm -hmm. that we are now. Mm -hmm. And probably in another 20 years, it's not the same thing that's going to motivate us. So in the end, you have all this motivation going out there, especially on social media, and it might not just apply to you. Mm. So uh, my motivation to you, or well, my message to you today would be find someone in your space, in your field to look up to. Mm. for maybe mentorship at a distance. Mm. Mm. Um, find someone to emulate, someone to, uh, you know, someone that you can recognize is doing great things in your field and, and you know, try and, and emulate them. Yeah. Talking about people doing great things, it's also very important right now to please draw your young ones closer because certain news are coming out tomorrow, mm. okay? Tomorrow, um, there will be the policy meeting for fixing jam cutoff mark. Okay. And we know what has been happening lately about young people attempting suicide due to fear of, um, you know, not meeting the cutoff cut mark, mark for jam. Yeah, so when the cutoff mark is fixed tomorrow, please, <laughs> it might seem funny, but it's true. Please draw your young ones closer. Assure them that failing jam or not making the cutoff mark is not the end of the world. It's very important because tomorrow, yeah. I don't want to hear stories for the rest of the week about how someone decided that they wanted to take their life yeah. because they didn't it, meet. It's sad, but, yeah. but, but true. Speaking, what of, speaking of, of Monday motivation, um, mm. uh, what, what, one thing I'm going to say to everyone mm. is take risks. Mm. Very important. Mm. Take risks. Um, and ask yourself this question. What's the worst thing that will happen if you make that phone call? Mm. If you send that text message, if you do that proposal, mm. the worst thing that can happen is they'll tell you no, but no. take risks, go out there ah. and do it. Yeah. Make a movie, do a song, go to the studio, yeah. whatever it is that you need to do, do it now. I see my, let me give my own. Yeah. All right. I want to send that message. Oh I will send that message now. <laughs> I will replay this video. I, you, the person I want to send the message to, you know you're me. You know me. So I will just play your miss part. I will just cut this part of the video where your miss said take risks. <laughs> okay. If you tell me no, I will not stop. <laughs> I will continue haranguing. I will continue haranguing. If you tell me no, I will wow. continue. But yes, I, I, I love that. Not as in, we are really scared of no's. Yeah. I, I, I mean, at different times, man, there's something I wanted to send to someone, and it was like, ah, and look, the most that happens is a no. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, no, I move on to the next one, or I continue bringing in and all that. I, I sent an so, email yeah. uh, a few weeks ago, and I got a response within 10, 15 minutes. It was a no. Yeah. And so I responded to the no <laughs> with another email, okay. seeing whether I could follow up and all of that. Mm. But she didn't re re reply. Mm. Uh, but her, her email had her phone number in it. So I was scared to make the call hmm. because wow. it was, it's a very senior person. So after like 48 hours, I then picked up the phone. I said, you know what? The worst thing that can happen is it's another, another no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so I then make the phone call. Uh, I said, hi, my name is Yomi Okwa. I sent you an email. Mm. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't have money for you this year. So, <laughs> so we then started talking. And then she says, oh, tell me more about yourself. What do you do? So I you know, said a little bit more. At the end of that conversation, mm. 1.5 million. What? <laughs> I'm telling you, that's, that's wow. the way to go. So wow. I'm just saying... <laughs> Because she just kept getting more and more interested. Mm. Oh, you did that? Oh, yeah. I was the one who did that. I did this in 2005. I did this in 2007. Mm. So she got really, really interested. And it's, oh, we should meet. Mm. We should uh, set up a meeting. And, you know. Uh, um, and you know, this thing Yomi said just yeah. reminded me wow. of something. Yeah. Mm. Consistency. Mm. Do so much. 
Mm. and be ready to do extra mm. like do you extra spend mile. so yeah you, you you actually you know you have a job and then you just feel i turn up every day i'm not g getting anything from it and then the opportunity comes it just opens and you yeah. seize it yes it and you make realize that, that every yeah because when call, they ask yeah. you what have you learned what can you offer and you start saying oh I, i've done this before i've done and these were things you did on your job and then you become like a superstar there because you maximize the opportunity yep I think we've sufficiently motivated you <laughs> at this point. I mean, I'm sending a <laughs> message already. Uh, who are you sending Mike a message? Sending Mike 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 message. Uh, well, if you tell me no, I will call you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost past 1.5. Okay. <laughs> so we are. Welcome. It's still Wake Up Nigeria. We have a very wet Monday morning. But that doesn't mean we won't give you our auto care segment. We have Ayo Shofela right here in the garden with us. And she's here to talk a little bit more about hybrid vehicles. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Good morning. All right. So um, I wasn't um, that attentive last week when you started. I'm sorry. And for those that missed it, we need to just recap what exactly a hybrid vehicle is. Okay, a hybrid vehicle, like we said last week, is a vehicle that combines two power sources. Okay. This car in front of us is a conventional car. Okay. It just has one power source. Okay. And that is the petrol or the diesel that powers the engine. Mm. But for a hybrid, you have that, which is the petrol or the diesel, yeah. and then you have an electric motor, okay. which is being assisted with the battery. So okay. you have two power sources, which means the car can either run on fuel or run on its battery. All right, so now I know what the car battery looks like. This is a car battery. Is this the same type of car battery I would see in a hybrid vehicle? This is a conventional car battery, 12 volts. Okay. You would find this in a hybrid. Okay. Yes, but what would they call it in the hybrid is the auxiliary battery. Okay. Which means it has a main battery that's doing the job. And the main battery, like I said last week, can go as far as a thousand volts. Wow. That's okay. pretty high. How many volts would this be? This then? is just 12 volts. Oh. This is your regular 12 volts battery. So this is a really big battery you're talking this is, about. It's uh, for the, this the car, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big I mean battery for this car. And for that, it's a very big battery. Okay. It takes up usually the whole back seats. Wow. So when you're sitting in a hybrid at the back, you're actually sitting on top of the battery. Because the Incredible. hole underneath of that seat is the battery. Okay. That's the first difference. But what about the engine itself? Uh, this is a conventional engine we're looking at now. Mm -hmm. um, but how would it be different in a hybrid vehicle? So looking at the engine, the main difference between the two engines is this is a fuel powered um, engine. Okay. In the hybrid, you have an engine that would both accommodate fuel and accommodate the battery side of it. Okay. Which means that components need like the alternator in this one yeah. will be missing in that one. Oh, fantastic. You don't need an alternator for the hybrid because you have what we call the inverter and the converter doing the job of charging and um, um, adding power to the battery. Okay, so I, I know that the alternator is what makes sure that the battery stays charged mm -hmm. when the engine is on, yeah. right? Yeah. Now that's for a conventional vehicle. Exactly. So how come a hybrid vehicle doesn't need an alternator? Like I said, the hybrids use an inverter okay. and they have a converter, okay. which means that the battery in there, once it starts going to a certain percentage, mm. the engine kicks up okay. and starts powering the inverter to charge that battery. Oh. So it's doing the job of the alternator. Okay, you don't need an additional alternator in that. That's one of the differences between this engine and a hybrid engine. Okay. Now another difference would be things like the water pump. Okay. In a hybrid engine, you usually have close to two water pumps hmm. because that inverter system needs to be cooled down because it gets hot very quickly. Okay. So you have a water pump there that's hmm. pumping that um, coolant around that system okay. and you have the regular water pump on the engine. Okay. If you don't do that, what will happen is the regular water pump on the engine is belt driven, mm. which means when the engine shuts down, that water pump is not going to function. Okay. So the hybrid system would overheat. Um, so are you saying that the hybrid system doesn't use the belt function? It doesn't use the belt function. So there That's are no the entire. Belts. No, you actually have the belt, but okay. it doesn't power the hybrid system of okay. the car. Fantastic. So this is a whole different technology completely. Exactly. Um, but now I know that there are some standard things that you're supposed to check for with a hybrid engine, uh, with, with a normal, with normal conventional yeah. engine. 
are they completely different for the things uh, for hybrid engines? No, you have similarities. Okay. Like your engine oil, yeah. you definitely have to have engine oil yeah. in that car too. Okay. So you would have the same dipstick. Yeah. Your radiator is going to be there. You need okay. a radiator okay. to um, take coolant in. You're going to have the fans. Oh. You're going to have your air filter. Okay. Those things are standard. Okay. To the extent you even have the injectors there too. Beautiful. Those are standard okay. things. But the additional things you would have there are what I just mentioned. Mm. Take, for instance, the AC compressor. Mm. It's not belt driven like on a conventional car. Okay. On a hybrid, it's electric. All right. So you have a case where if it's belt driven, when the engine shuts down, it means you won't use your AC anymore. So they have to make it wow. totally electric. Okay, fantastic. So I know that there's some things inside the vehicle that we need to check out as well. Mm -hmm. You said you were going to show me exactly what uh, those are. Please go in. Uh, I'll step around the other side and let's see if we can get some more information. I've always wondered about the gearbox of a hybrid engine. Can you tell me what the difference would be with the so gearbox? So looking at the hybrid, mm. we still have the normal shifter on a hybrid, okay. just like this. But what is inside the gearbox is totally different. Okay. In a normal conventional car like this, inside the gearbox you have gears, that's actually where the name comes from, where you have a lot of gears combining together for shifting back and forth. But when it comes to a, a hybrid, what you have inside is an electric motor. Okay. Alright, so what about the, the dashboard right now? So is there anything I would notice on the dash that talks about, um, you know... The hybrid system? Yes. Exactly. What we have here, we have what you see on a normal car. You have the fuel gauge, you have the temperature gauge there, and the odometer, the speedometer, you have everything here. Okay. Now, on a hybrid, there are some things that you would see differently. Mm. Take, for instance, the fuel gauge. It will be there, okay. but then you have an additional gauge, okay. which is for the battery. Okay. So you want, to, you want to always take note of that while you're driving. Mm. If you get to any point where you see the battery is going down, mm. going to a certain um, level, and the engine doesn't cut off, mm. that is telling you there's something significantly wrong. Because okay. once it gets to a certain percentage, the um, hybrid system should cut off and the engine comes on mm. to charge it. Then once the battery gets to another level, the engine should cut off and then the battery takes over. Okay, so is there any point in time in a hybrid vehicle that you can use just complete battery or complete uh, fuel engine. So is there any, any way you could have either or, or must it always work fun function with that battery? It must always function. It's totally automatic. You okay. have no control over that when wow. it comes to switching. Okay. The car does the switching itself. If mm. at any point it doesn't switch, mm. then that means there's a problem. All right. Then one other thing a lot of people will notice, those who have driven hybrid cars would mm. notice that there's usually a ready button, mm. a ready light, sorry, mm. that shows when you turn the engine on. Okay. So take for instance, this was a hybrid car and I get in and okay. I turn it and I yeah. start like that. You're not going to hear that at first. Oh. That engine sound, you won't hear it. Amazing. In fact, a lot of people who drive hybrids for the very first time get confused because they've turned it and they're not hearing the engine make that sound. Okay. But if you put the car in drive, it will keep moving. Amazing. That's because it starts up with the battery. Now, along the way you're driving, you just hear the engine pick on its own. Yeah. I've seen people who get scared with that mm. because they're like, my engine just started, my engine just went <laughs> off. But that's the way a hybrid works. Okay, so uh, I'm thinking it must be really fuel efficient uh, working with a hybrid vehicle. But the charging points for hybrid vehicles, uh, so for instance, uh, I, I see hy hybrid vehicles as kind of like semi-electric cars. Um, is there any way to charge it apart from um, the engine being on? No, no, there is no other Not way. Not at all? Not at all. Okay. The only time you get to start charging all right. cars is when you move to totally electric cars. All and right. yes, they are very full efficient. Okay, so I have to uh, head back into the studio now, but thank you so much, uh, Ayo, for giving us all this info. I, I think I've learned a thing or two, and I'm interested in checking out a hybrid car or two <laughs> myself. All right, so they're in the uh, studio standing by for us. It's all yours, guys. It's all yours. All right, you're welcome back to the Kitchen Radio on Wake Up Nigeria. Surprise! I know you weren't expecting to see us again, <laughs> but we wanted to show you how Chef Tina is going to put this together hmm? and make it attractive. Mm -hmm. So many people have always been curious as to how Chef Tina does her, <laughs> her plates in. And so today you get to see it happen. Mm -hmm. Now, the yam pottage is ready. ready. Hey, the grand unveiling. <laughs> so this is ISEF. Okay. So 
So the, the yam, uh, while you're serving, could you run us through um, how we achieved this yam pottage? Okay, um, I had my yam, yeah. seasoning cubes, salt, mm -hmm. onions, and um, tomato paste. Okay. The tomato paste, the one with pepper and onions. Okay. That's what I had and then. When it got cooked soft a little bit for me, I had to mash it with the masher. Okay. Then I added my um, shrimps and the vegetable oil. Okay. Then lastly, what I added was the spring onions. That's why you see the greenish the greens. Okay. parts of it. So I am serving now. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to put my fish by the side. Okay. So I still have some little spring onions okay. to garnish. And you sprinkle. Yeah. That's where the color thing comes about. <laughs> see that? Looks lovely, doesn't it? Yeah. So, this is... And voila! Our breakfast is served. I mean, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Chef Tina. So, this is breakfast uh, for champions, mm -hmm. for Wake Up Nigeria champions. This is my breakfast, by the way. So you can join me. I see so many bad eyes looking at me right now. It's all right. It's all right. We'll take this break. And of course, Wake Up Nigeria continues shortly. Stay with us. All right. So how about uh, some more Monday motivation for you uh, today? Now, Alex Adi. Adefemi is a peak performance business and life coach and popularly known as AAA. And he's passionate about helping businesses and corporate leaders unlock their potential. Now this morning, he is going to be sharing with us the secret to staying motivated, especially through tough times. It's good to have you join us again this morning, sir. As always, so you know, um, stay motivated. We talked about this um, earlier on in the show. You know, <clears throat> Um, with my colleagues yeah. and you know it, it's a big deal you know because sometimes people say um, uh, performance coaches and uh, life coaches are a dime a dozen you know mm. but there's never <laughs> enough motivation uh, especially for people who you know want to be, uh, continue to uh, make progress and uh, do things so anyway today mm. we'll talk about tough times and its connection yeah with motivation getting out of it yeah so talk to us so basically um there are two sides to dealing with tough times. Um, there is, I will mention that, there is the actions that you need to take. The, you need to find the strategies. Certainly even economic tough times, for instance, um, you need to find the business strategies that will get you out of it. Mm. But then there is a, there's a human spirit angle to it that if you don't have the right motivation, no matter the strategies you have, you will, no, you will not be able to drive yourself through those strategies to get results. So there are some things that you must put at the back of your mind that will help you. So um, I think the first thing is you must take charge of your mind. Right. When I say take charge of your mind, it means that um, because the world we live in these days, there's a lot going on in your environment. A lot of information. You know, there's a lot of stuff yeah, happening every, around you. Yes, indeed. So now, when you don't take charge of your mind, what happens to you is that um, you begin to allow a lot of negative things that is filtering around you. Remember, we're dealing with tough times now. So within tough times, that means most of the things that you see around you aren't too palatable, yeah. aren't too encouraging. Yeah. So at that point, you need to be very conscious of what enters your mind and what you think with your mind. But isn't it, it, a lot of people always say that, you know, I, I always try to control my mind. So maybe, mm. okay, so yesterday was Sunday, lots of people went to mm. church mm. and then, you know, so, so they're motivated, yeah. you know, from church, they got a blessing. And then, you know, so Monday, uh, they also try to ensure that they're controlling their mind. You say, but by the time it's 12 o'clock or one o'clock, so many things have happened that's already affecting my thoughts yeah. and my mind. So how yeah. do I deal with that? So now, the truth of the matter is sometimes, huh? um, in fact, the minute they step out of church car park, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lagos faces them again, yeah. literally. That's the way it works. And so how do you deal with those things with your mind? It's about being conscious. You know, your mind is, is divided into two parts, mm. your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. Most of the times I teach people to focus on their subconscious mind because most of the times we do not focus there. But you see, at this point, I would tell you, switch to your conscious mind, be, me, meaning that you need to be conscious about your thoughts. The major, the, major, um, the major component of your mind is your thoughts. Mm. 
And if you can take hold of your thoughts, make sure that the, what you're thinking about um, yourself in every situation is something that is positive, something that will help you, something that will empower you. Mm. You'll be able to put yourself in what we call a resourceful state. Mm. That's mm. key. Being in a resourceful state is very key in so that you can be able to achieve results. Because when you are not in a resourceful state, what happens is that even if I give you the best strategy and I give you the best framework and I give you the best template to work it out, you will still find out that you will not get the results you desire, right? Because you'll probably be dragging your feet, mm. you'll probably be feeling down, you'll be feeling negative, you'll be thinking this will not work, how is it short? And once you're in that state of mind, you can't get results. Yeah, that's a one good of the things. Yeah, okay, okay. Go, go ahead. If I, if I may, yeah. a good example is athletes for instance. Mm -hmm. Now, for an athlete, 90% or 80 to 90% of why they achieve results is psychological. It's apart from the fact that they've trained themselves, they, they practice on the field, on the court, whatever it is, when they are, when, whatever it is they're doing, 80 to 90% of the reasons why they get results is that they are in a state of mind, a, they put themselves in a resourceful state of mind that tells themselves, I must achieve results. Mm -hmm. I have to get results. And the minute if the opponent seems to have the psychological edge, I don't care how talented and how gifted the other person is. That person with the, opponent, with the uh, psychological edge all of a sudden just has a big chance mm. of actually beating the so the, so the, the game the, or, or the, the, the game or the fight is is it starts in the mind. starts from the mind because once you win in the mind then you can win fantastic in life. that's exactly mm. i wouldn't have put it even better than that once you, once you lose the battle in the mind it's done right all right so let's move on to the next thing so i mean so now that uh, i'm beginning to understand my mind and how to control my thoughts mm and begin to steer it in the direction of the positive. Well, what's the next thing that I, that I start to do when I'm thinking about it? Remember, now this person is going through tough times. You know, it, it's a challenging period. Maybe it has to do with their job or their family or whatever it is. And you know, so they want to stay motivated so that they can hit their goals or their targets or their vision. Mm. So what's the next thing that I'm thinking about? I, I, didn't, put, I didn't plan to say this, but I'll mention it. Mm. There's something called your compelling reason. A lot of times when people are trying to get results, they don't have what you call a reason that compels them. Something that they look back at and they make sure that, ah, Omo, if I don't get results here, man, I'm done. I have to get this done. Mm. It's what makes it your goals a must and not a should. Mm. So when your goals become a must, your, all your resources, all your mind, everything you have. Take for instance, if something happens here and you have to escape out of this place, the first thing on your mind is how, how do I get out of here? Mm. It's not, oh, maybe, um, are we sure this is where the problem is coming from? That's not what you're asking first. The first thing is, I mean, if you're Nigerian anyway, mm. <laughs> the first thing you want to do is you want to get out of here right. and find a place to be safe. That's the first thing on your mind. When that is your paramount goal, when you found a compelling reason that makes something a must for you, you begin to make sure that every resource that you have all of a sudden goes into that one thing. Hmm. So if you are in a tough time in business, in, a, in, in, in I mean, in your business, in your life, and you have to realize and ask yourself, what is my must now? Hmm. What is my compelling reason? What is the thing that would drive me to do, go the extra mile in getting results despite whatever obstacle I face? Because it's not about the obstacle, really. Mm. It's not about the tough time. It's not about the challenge. That's not the challenge. The challenge is you. Mm. And the minute you can tell yourself that, listen, um, despite whatever is, on, is, is in front of me, man, I have to find a way around. Yeah, so how do most you times we find how, a way how do, you, how, how do you then tell yourself this? Like on a daily basis, you know, so uh, people all, all also talk about ups and downs. So yeah. I'm talking, and I'm talking about mental ups and downs. Though. Yes. So today you feel motivated because you, you listen to Coach AAA and you're like, ah, yeah, mm. I can do this. You know, mm. I have my compelling reason. Mm. And, you know, so it's good for Monday and Tuesday. Mm. But um, <laughs> But on Wednesday, you wake up, you're like, man, you, I don't feel like getting out of bed. It's not working. Mm. It's just all talk. Mm. Uh, but you know that, you know I, mean? I understand what you're saying. But you know that you realize that um, being in a rut, hmm? that's what we call being in a rut. Yeah. Being in a rut is a routine. It, there's a process to it. And being motivated is a process to it. Mm. And most of the times, we allow the environment, how we feel, begin to determine which one we want to go with. And right. most of the times, the world around you doesn't want you to succeed. So <laughs> it's going to make sure you are in a rut. It is young your job to make sure that you find your process of being motivated. So part of the things I mentioned is being, being in charge of your mind 
um, finding your compelling reason. Sometimes you don't feel like going, getting up in, from bed, asking yourself, man, what's the use? After all, I mean, it's not going to work out. I dropped the proposal last week. It did not answer me. So what's, why should I get up again and, and go today? But then you must ask yourself, what is the reason why I'm doing this thing? Hmm. So take, for instance, it might, for somebody, their compelling reason might be their child that this child must not suffer the way I suffered. Mm. And every time you look at that child's face, you know I must give this child a better life. And that gives you your compelling reason, and gives you the energy, and gives you the drive. So for instance, this morning I posted on my social media, I put my wife's picture there. Fine and you were just motivated. I just said, this is my Monday, Monday motivation. Hey. That, man, I have to there deliver for this baby. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You need to find what makes you, what drives you and takes you to go the extra mile, to go one more, one more step ahead. Hmm. You can get the results that you want. Very important. I mean, at the end of the day, it looks like what you're saying is that a lot of these things is not based on external circumstances. It's based on the individual. Yes. So it's based, it's based on, on me, on based you, on what on I your decide. mind. Hmm. Now, the next thing you need to do is that you need to look at your body language. Your body language is key because we, people don't realize that you, um, there is a connection between your mind and your body language. Right. So take, for instance, there's a study done by, um, by in Harvard, by a Harvard professor. Right. And that's, she said that if you stand for four minutes like Superman, Hmm. Let me stand well, like that. Wonder yeah. Woman. As we get ready to close now. And you stand like this. Even if you are feeling down, and you stand for like two to four minutes, your, te your, it's in fact, your level of testosterone goes up and your cortisol drops. Wow. So, so, so there's me standing. You, there's that me giving that. That puts you in a state of saying, in the next four minutes, yeah. you realize that you are more resourceful, you can get more results because you feel more powerful. All of a sudden, I feel because powerful you're using right your mind. now. I'm just using feeling, your body, yeah. To, to deceive or more or less um, trick your mind yeah. to believe that we are powerful, we ha we've got this. Because when you are powerful, when you are doing fine, your body language says it. Hmm. Once you are confident, somebody can see that you are confident. That you're confident if, yeah. you are, if you are feeling less confident, people can see it on you that you are feeling less confident. Triple A, I'm just motivated right now. I feel like Superman. <laughs> and I'm chesting out. That food over there is actually making me motivated. <laughs> that food is your compelling reason. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, motivation the food. Because this studio has been, <laughs> I, I can't tell is, you. That is your compelling been, reason right there. Okay, so mm. on your screen right now is today's meal uh, by Chef Tina. Uh, Chef Tina won't be running through it again because we did that like twice or thrice today. Yeah, so wow. instead, we'll just wrap up the show right away. Yeah, Over to you, Yomi and Titi. <laughs> oh my God. Just go ahead and have Let's just go ahead and taste it. Uh, we spent it's, a lot of time in the kitchen. Chef Tina, well done. Mm. Thank Big you. Big thank you to our friends over at Homely NG for the kitchen accessories. Yes, indeed. A big shout out to everyone who was on the show today. We've had a blast today. It's been interesting. Really, really great. Yeah. And we'll be doing it again tomorrow morning That's from right. 6 a.m. So here's a question for you. Yeah. Are you motivated? Mm. Mm. You Sorry. should be. You should be. <laughs> Triple A, well done. Thank you so much. I'm motivated. Man. You're motivated. Thank you so much, Chef Tina. This is very motivating. Thank you. Much love. Have a great day, y'all. Have a great day.